So even if you're not buying one of the new RTX 4000 series GPUs, Nvidia might be giving you a free performance boost on your older Nvidia GPU with the RTX 30 series uh, on the 522.25 WH QL game ready driver. Now these charts are from Nvidia uh, and they're explaining on their, uh, on their website here what uh, they're claiming uh, they have done. So they say that these improvements, first of all, are for DirectX 12 performance, and they're saying for GeForce RTX GPUs. It's not spe it's not specifying GTX GPUs, and I didn't quite frankly have time to go back and retest on my GTX 1060 or anything like that. But anyway, they're saying that um, they have put in some new DirectX 12 enhancements, and they're saying that these include shader compilation optimization, reduced CPU overhead, and resizable bar profiles, which I'm so excited to see for Forza Horizon 5 and F122. I've hated that Nvidia, well, I liked that Nvidia enabled resizable bar support a long time ago, but they go with a whitelist. So unless they whitelist the game, you can't see any performance benefits from it. Whereas AMD with smart access memory gives you the option to toggle it on and off at, in any game that you want. So anyway, I'm gl glad to see Nvidia finally adding some more games to their resizable bar profiles. Um, and then they're also saying that, you know, we could see up to 24% uh, per, uh, performance improvements. Now it's looking like the majority of games would probably be a lot less. They're highlighting some that have, you know, Shadow of the Tomb Raider up to 5% uh, performance and remember up to, right? But they're also saying Horizon Zero Dawn sees sees 8% at 4K, again, up to. Forza Horizon 5 up to 8%. They're saying 20% at least up to that in Cyberpunk 2077. But also notice that when we look at their charts, different GPUs seem to respond to this differently. They're showing us a 3090 Ti, a 3080 Ti, a RTX 3070 Ti, and an RTX 3060 Ti. And you can see, for example, in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where their 3090 Ti is seeing a 24.6% performance improvement, it's looking like the 3060 Ti is only seeing an 11.5% gain. Well, only, I mean, 11.5% is still a big gain. But again, 24.6 on 3090 Ti. So I'll be interested to see what I get in these tests because what I'm testing is my RTX 3080 12 gigabyte. And while they're using an i9-12900K system, uh, I'll be testing mine on a uh, on my R9 5950X with 32 gigabytes of CL16, uh, 3600 CL16 memory. And uh, I do have resizable bar enabled. They're showing us different results at 4K, um, seeing fewer improvements, but still some substantial improvements overall. They're also showing us some improvements at 1440p. So in my testing, I'm gonna show you a variety of tests, 1080p, 1440p, some 4K, a variety of games, and again, a variety of graphic settings and whatnot. We'll see what sort of performance improvements, if any, we see on my setup. So first I loaded up Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this is a completely fresh benchmark on the uh, left and the right, did them both today. We're seeing 4K and I selected the highest preset. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean every setting up to the highest. For example, it doesn't include ray tracing. Um, but just selected the highest preset, 4K. This is my RTX 3080 12 gigabyte, old driver versus new driver. And I'm not gonna show you the whole benchmark, but the first thing I'm noticing here is that they're basically the same performance with margin of error. And if anything, at least in this scene, it's actually looking like the new driver is underperforming and the overall results from the full benchmark confirm that it's a tie, it's margin of error. But I was thinking, okay, that's 4K. They said that maybe in CPU bound scenarios, we would see more, uh, you know, more performance on the new driver. So I decided to go to 1080p. Now it's hard to get CPU bound, but we can see here that the GPU usage isn't quite at like 99%. So we are getting a little bit CPU bound here. And I think as it goes further into this uh, city, we might see a little bit as well, but we're not seeing that dramatically different of performance. And even when we do, I don't think it's really favoring the new driver. <laughs> so, um, you know, they did only claim about a 5% 
performance improvement in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And again, they're showing different GPUs responding differently. I'm just testing my RTX 3080 12 gigabyte. So maybe if we were testing different GPUs or maybe on different CPUs, maybe we would see a bit of a difference. We do actually right here see the new driver taking a bit of a lead in this particular scene. Whereas earlier we saw the old drivers taking a bit of a lead. So it certainly does seem to be a difference between the two. But, uh, you know, scene by scene, which one's winning, hard to say. They overall averaged out at about a tie. So I decided to look at Forza Horizon 5, where they said that we now have resizable bar support. And I am very excited about that. And it looks like we actually are seeing some performance improvement here on the new driver. I've been very frustrated that NVIDIA has not been updating more games with resizable bar support when we uh, see them actually gain performance from having that with, you know, smart access memory on AMD, for example. On AMD, you can toggle smart access memory on and off on any game you feel like, but on NVIDIA, they have to whitelist it in the driver unless you modify files uh, through a third-party program called NVIDIA Inspector. So. I'm really hoping this is a sign that NVIDIA is going to give us more performance like this. At the 4K Extreme preset, we saw a 76 going up to an 80 average. And now here, looking at 1080p, where again, they said in more CPU-bound scenarios, we might see a larger difference. So I'm still at the Extreme preset, so we're not particularly CPU limited here. But we are once again seeing the new driver outperforming the old driver and it's 122 versus 112 on average so that's nice to see now i will say that my old driver there was not the most recent old driver um and so just throwing that out there but anyway <laughs> let's go ahead here and look at cyberpunk now their testing was using ray tracing and a dlss quality i believe so i decided to start out with that Right now we're at 1440p RT Ultra with DLSS quality, and I'm seeing what, I mean, it's it looks like a tie. So <laughs> I don't know if maybe we managed to get CPU bound at some point. If we would see the new driver show these dramatic performance gains that they're talking about, they're showing 20 plus perform, uh, percent performance on at least some GPUs and settings. I'm definitely not seeing that here at 1440p RT Ultra. Now, once again, though, I will mention that um, I'm really throwing this video together as a byproduct of retesting my 3080 on the new driver in order to get it ready for comparisons with the next generation of GPUs coming out on this newer driver. Um, so uh, this old driver that I'm testing on is, again, not the most recent older driver, but it's an older driver. <laughs> it's a bit older footage, but... Uh, any minor differences here, I would just chalk up to margin of, of error and variance in a run. Anyway, I decided, well, okay, let's go down to 1080p. Maybe we could force a little bit more of a CPU-limited scenario, something like that. I also turned off ray tracing, which, I mean, ray tracing is weird when you're trying to force a CPU uh, load because the... Um, the ray tracing does increase the CPU demand, but it also increases the GPU demand. So um, you'll often end up even more GPU limited, despite the fact that it did also increase the CPU load. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't feel like I'm seeing too many meaningful differences here. I'm curious as we get across the street here, this can be a fairly demanding scene on the CPU as we come out into this. Uh, but, you know, watching the GPU utilization, um, it's staying up in the in the mid 90% range and upper 90% range. So, I mean, I'm not seeing the massive differences that they did, but maybe if I tested a different GPU or different graphics settings, different scene, something like that. But overall, again, this looks like margin of error. So I decided to jump to a different game. And let's go ahead and look at Horizon Zero Dawn. This is 1440p at their ultimate quality, that is their maximum settings. And now we're really seeing higher frame rates on the right-hand side. And look at the GPU utilization. Um, like, I think we're definitely hitting points where we are CPU limited. And I think the new driver is giving us um, definitely noticeable better frames here on average. Uh, so I decided to go down to 1080p 
And at 1080p, we're seeing even more of a CPU limit, right? The GPU sometimes is dipping, you know, well below even 90%, sometimes down to the 80% range, really depends on the scene. But we are more CPU limited. Uh, and I was curious if we would see anything different here, but once again, looks like we are seeing better performance on the uh, new driver here. Uh, you can see the driver versions used there as well. Once again, uh, the tests on the old driver are a little bit, well, older, so it's not the most recent old driver, but we're definitely seeing a performance difference here. Um, it also looks like my uh, screen capture looks a little fuzzy on the left-hand side. Sorry for that, not quite sure why that happened. But anyway, I was curious if we'd still see the performance gains at 4K where we're not CPU limited. And actually we do, so it doesn't seem to be just a CPU bound a limitation or anything like that. Um, and this game already had resized bar support, so that can't explain the entire difference. But anyway, interesting stuff. All right, well, despite my imperfect testing methodology, because again, this, this video itself is really a byproduct of I'm already updating my RTX 3080 benchmarks on this new driver, so it would have been nice if I had all of my old benchmarks done, you know, on the same day and with the same like maybe most previous driver or something like that. So apologies that I didn't have that today, but we did see various old drivers up against the new drivers uh, in the same test system. And we at least saw confirmation that some games are showing a so it's a noticeable performance improvement. Although I didn't necessarily see exactly the same performance improvements they showed us, I'm not using the same GPU or test platform and maybe not graphic settings or the exact scene in the game or anything like that. Because even if even if they're claiming these performance improvements in Cyberpunk, for example, uh, they, they're not telling us if that was the built-in game benchmark or if they're testing some particularly CPU-bound scene or something like that. So there's a, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, the performance improvements might not completely match up. But overall, I'm glad to see these improvements. This is good. I'm really excited to see games like Forza Horizon 5 getting added to the resizable bar support, and I hope this becomes a more frequent addition by NVIDIA. I was afraid that they had just completely left that behind as like, well, we'll throw in resizable bar support to counter uh, AMD's smart access memory more as a marketing point, and then they just forgot about it. Uh, but we're seeing it uh, showing up again. So that's good. Hopefully they stick to it. And overall, hey, you can actually download free performance. So if you haven't yet, uh, I haven't seen any issues with these drivers. That doesn't mean there aren't any out there, but um, I would say, why don't you go download yourself some pre uh, free performance if you haven't yet? And I hope all of you have an excellent day.